Good afternoon, YouTube pipe community. This is New England Pipe Smoker coming back at you with a long overdue video. You know how it is, guys. Life gets in the way between work and family and everything else. And I haven't been able to get to as many videos as I would like to. I keep saying I'd like to increase the amount of videos I make and I never seem to produce them, so I apologize. First and foremost, thank you to all my loyal viewers and welcome to all my new subscribers on my YouTube channel. Hope you're enjoying the videos. And all comments and suggestions are greatly appreciated. So, let's get down to it. Today, the tobacco that I'm going to be reviewing is Rat Tray's Wallace Flake. Now, this is a tobacco that I haven't seen too many reviews on, um, on the, in the YouTube pipe community. Although I could be uh, mistaken. So anyways, let's get down to a description of the um, tobacco. So, a tobacco reviews, I try not to read too many of the actual reviews to not skew my view on the tobacco. So I'd like to get a rundown. So I'm going to read to you the description off their website. So once again, off tobacco reviews, it says Virginia tobaccos ranging in color from golden to chocolate brown, having been combined with sun-dried Indian leaf and ennobled with a very fine plum aroma. Um, and then there's a note section as well. After K&K &K lost the Peterson range to MacBaron, they did not want to waste their recipes. They tweaked them a little and simply renamed the old Peterson line to be re-released under the Rat Trays label. So Malcolm Flake being Aaron Moore Flake, Sterling Flake being Irish Flake, and Walls Flake being University Flake. The tin of Walls Flake notes, we would describe Walls Flake as the holy grail among the flakes. Try this, try these extraordinary creation, and you'll know why we stick out our neck that far. Virginia Tobaccos whose color ranges from golden to chocolate brown were combined with sun-dried India and finally refined with a very fine plum aroma. Now, if anybody wants to go back and read, uh, excuse me, and watch my tin opening on this tobacco, you will notice immediately when I open up the tin, uh, I talk about a fruit note. At the time, I didn't pay attention and read the actual front of the label, which says plum, and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. Obviously, it is a very distinct fruit aroma which is plum. Um, so let's get down to some statistics. Um, in terms of pricing, pipes and cigars, this is as of this morning. So what's today, 820, 821, whatever today is. As of this morning, pipes and cigars had this tobacco for 1027, but it is back ordered. Smoking pipes had it for 1027. And these are all 50 gram tins. And Four Noggins has it for 1079. Okay, it is a Burley, Virginia. Um, blend. Um, obviously the flavoring detected is plum and uh, they blatantly say that and it's cut into a flake. I don't have any left yet. Um, I only got maybe I don't know a half a bowl left maybe of, of, a, of a bigger bowl um, but I've rubbed them all out. Um, when I opened up this tin I left them in flake format because it was in the beginning of the summer and there wasn't much humidity but the last month here in southern New England We've had a ton of humidity, and I just cannot get any flakes, tobacco to dry. So um, I've been actually rubbed everything out, and it seems to be drying a little bit better, even though it's still tough. I did leave it out for overnight, still nothing because there's just so much humidity in the air. I put it in the microwave, I just had wet, warm tobacco. It didn't really help. Um, so for the purposes of this tobacco, uh, excuse me, of this review, I'm going to be, um, I smoked it in a couple different pipes. Um, I tend to do that to get a distinct flavor if it, anything differences between the, the uh, blends. And I've seen, what I've done this before, you guys seem to like the um, descriptions between the different um, pipes. So what I'm going to do is talking about this tobacco in four different pipes today. The first one I'm going to talk about is in a poker pipe. The second pipe we're going to address is a Savinelli 673, which I bought recently. Then a Savinelli 101 Billiard. And finally, a Peterson um, 5 um, in the Dalkey series, which is a bent pipe, almost a full bent pipe. So I like to talk about the differences between them. So first and foremost, let me say that when I first began smoking the tobacco, um, I left it in flake format. And throughout the smoke, that heavy essence of plum was in the room note and also the retro hail. Um, some of the viewers who may not know what that is, I've explained it a few times, most people do. It's when you take the smoke from your mouth and exhale it through the nostrils, where you get a lot of other flavor sensing um, sensations in the nose. That's why you can get some of those more distinct flavors than just 
keeping the smoke in your mouth and, and exhaling. So I said there was that distinct plum for, um, flavoring and you could smell it in the room though. You could still smell that core and taste that core Virginia. But then I rubbed it out, as I said earlier in the video, as we've had high humidity here in southern New England, and it did change the, um, the flavoring a little bit. Um, I did notice it. The heavy flavoring, not the heavy flavoring, but the stronger and more intense flavoring wasn't there. It wasn't overpowering plum, but it was more noticeable. So let's get into the actual um, reviews for each um, pipe. So like I said, first we're going to start off with the polka. Um, it was rubbed out. It was relatively dry. Um, I did use a Zippo to light um, this tobacco. It's lit easily. It burned well throughout the course of the, the bowl. So my notes from this was that there are deep fruit flavor. And it's at times intense through the retrohale, but in a positive way, not in a negative way. Didn't overpower the tobacco. Um, can still taste, um, you can still taste the fruit flavoring um, without using the retrohale. Um, at times, it almost seemed like a plum and a dark cherry um, that almost came out. But be careful, it does get very hot, this tobacco. Um, you can still taste the base tobacco flavor in, in, in the blend, which is still nice because I like the natural taste of tobacco. Um, I wouldn't recommend this as an introduction to a Virginia Burley vapor category um, due to the fact that it's going to be, I think at the beginning you'd be overpowered by the sense of the, the taste of the flavoring in the plum and you wouldn't be able to detect those core base notes first and then build going from there. Um, even when it's very hot, it still did keep the fruit-like flavor in the retrohale. Okay, so it was overall enjoyable. Every one of these was an enjoyable experience. But now is when I see the, why I like smoking in different pipes, is now I get to see the full range of the tobacco. So, um, 673 now, it packs and lights easily. Okay, once again, it was used with a, um, with a Zippo. Um, upon lighting, it was 90% taste of the Virginia Burley tobacco. Um, it was more of that, that base core tobacco taste. You could um, still taste the plum through the retrohale, but it was, it was much less detectable, which was a much different than the poker where the plum uh, flavoring dominated throughout the poker. Um, this 10 continued through the rest of the entire bowl, where you get those base core flavors of that tobacco, even through the retrohale. You could smell the plum in the room note and slightly through the retrohale, but it was not as dominant, definitely, as the poker pipe. But like I said, still enjoyable. Okay, now we're going to go to the Savinelli 101 billiard pipe. Okay? Um, I packed it pretty dry and it lit easily, no problems, once again, with a Zippo lighter. I've been using the Zippo lighter more because I've had the ceiling fans on and my um, Corona, my IM Corona, it just worked easier with the, uh, the Zippo. Um, now with the 101, I got, once again, that core tobacco taste, but through the retrohale, I got more pepper notes, which I did not get on the other pipes. Um, so you got that slight peppery sensation through the nose throughout the course of the pipe with that more tobacco flavor. Um, the topping is noticeable, but it's not anywhere near where the poker pipe was. If you would have told me in the beginning these were the same tobaccos, I may have would have thought a little differently because they had different characteristics throughout the bowl. Um, and it was completely through the rest of that bowl as well. It didn't really change. There was no um, adjustments or transitions in that bowl. It was just that base core note of tobacco Slight pepper through the retrohale and the light tasting of the flavoring through the retrohale and in the room note. And lastly, I smoked it in a smaller tapered bowl, Peterson Dalkey Series 5. Um, looks again pretty dry, lit easily with a Zippo lighter. Um, I got slightly more flavor in the retrohale in this pipe than I did through the Savinelli 101. Um, when the smoke was in the mouth and I kept it in the mouth, you got more of that Virginia Burley vapor taste to it. Um, towards the middle of the bowl though, the fruit flavor began to intensify. Um, and it was, it was a very, it was very enjoyable throughout the bowl. It smoked relatively cool in this and I think that helped um, bring out some of that fruit flavoring. But like I said, it did have that transition to the middle of the bowl. So it's kind of like the porridge just kind of right deal. Um, like I said, there was, so there's four differences 
in each of those bowls. And I do like how each of those brought it out. So when I do uh, review my tobaccos, I will continue with that trend. And I picked those four tobacco, those four um, pipes, because that, my, those happen to be my four pipes that I use for Virginias, Burleys, and Vapors and stuff. The rest of my pipe collection is all aromatic pipes, because that's what I started off on. So overall impressions, I liked it a lot. It was good tobacco. The fruit flavoring was nice, and I think it was a good little bit of just uh, um, takeaway from a regular Virginia Vapor Burley blend, which is that core taste. You added a little bit to it, and it kind of went on a limb a little bit. It had a little bit of plums. A little bit. Of, it was different, but still kept that um, the, the core values, I guess you could say. After a while, that does get kind of monotonous and mundane. So I like the fact that this switched up a little bit and added a little something to it for me. Is it something I'd buy again? Yes. Um, at 10.27 a tin, that is a little steep, um, but it's definitely something I would buy again. Would I keep it on in my cellar? I don't know, maybe I'll buy a tin or two and keep it in the cell to see what the Virginias do with a little bit of age on them and the fruit flavoring does with a little bit of age to it. But so overall, it's a very enjoyable tobacco. I do recommend it to anyone out there who does like Virginia Burley's Vapors type blends with a little with that fruit flavoring. I do highly recommend it um, to anyone out there. Would I recommend it as a starter um, type of tobacco like that? No, I would not. Um, this is something I'd say someone who has a little bit more experience just so they could pick out the subtleties and really enjoy them more. But I think where someone new may be dominated by them. So once again, guys, this has been Rat Tray's Wallace Flake, and I would definitely recommend it to my viewers out there. Coming up next is will be a next tin opening. What I'm going to open, I don't know. I have my... Barron's Navy Flake, I have a Burley Cake, um, GLP's Sixpence, St. John's Flake, and I don't know what else. I think those are the four or five I have left to open still. So if, any, if you guys have any suggestions or would like to see something that me to do a tin opening and then review one, please leave it there and I'll, that'll help me with my decision, make it a little easier. Also, too, I should have a review hopefully coming up the next week or so regarding um, Virginia Woods. Okay? So once again, guys, comments, suggestions, greatly appreciated. And once again, this is New England Pipe Smoker, and thanks for watching.